Hi folks. Well, here we are in what, day 30 some, maybe 40 some of, you know, what we're going through with this coronavirus and this isolation and things. And, you know, it occurred to me that there are things that we're doing that are great, that we're learning different skills, that we're learning to communicate differently and things like that. But we're also learning what things are important to us, right? Not the least of which is maybe our hairdressers. You know, our hair starting to get unruly and, uh, you know, getting a little bit long. And I know I've talked to some ladies who are, you know, kind of worried that their roots are growing out and, uh, you know, they don't have someone to be able to touch those up. You know, sometimes um, we worry about people seeing us not at our best, seeing us as we maybe really are. But uh, I believe that, and I know that God knows us better than we know ourselves. God sees us with our roots showing and everything. And you know what? He loves us anyway. He loves us so much that as we celebrated this past week, Jesus came and died for us, but then he rose again from the dead for us. And, you know, it got me thinking, you know, when I thought about maybe hair and uh, things like that, that God knows every hair on our head. And it reminded me to read to you from Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And so then Jesus goes on to talk with his disciples about not worrying about the things in this life that are not worth worrying about because God has it all covered. He understands what we're going through. He understands all the times that uh, we have this isolation, all the things that we're missing, and he cares for us during this time. And so I want to read to you a little bit further down in Luke chapter 12, what Jesus said about worrying. Verse 22, then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than the birds. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your hearts on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. In this time of isolation and deprivation as, as far as, you know, some of the necessities and the conveniences that we find in this life that we're living, forced to live right now, consider that God has all of this under his control and that the God who gave his only son to die for us will also give us the things that we need. Because, you know, I got to thinking the other day how blessed we are, even in the midst of this. I mean, there are people that do not have food, and that is their normal state of, of living. Yet we have, you know, food that we can go get, many of us, some of us don't, and we need to take care of those people. Uh, but most of us in this country have food that we can have. We have water. We have, you know, how did the people cope 
with a epidemic like this back in the early 1900s when they barely even had any telephones. Matter of fact, most people did not have telephones back then. And so how did they cope with just being able to be in their houses and uh, watch the fire or watch what's going on outside and so forth, and that was it. Consider yourself blessed, and I firmly believe that we will come out of this not only soon, but better off for it, because I think that's God's plan. Amen? Amen. Thank you for joining us.